Hello and welcome. Please enjoy this short readiness video on Azure Cosmos DB. How are you doing? Hey, good. <laughs> nice to be back here. Great to have you with us, of course. Andrew, can you please tell us more about your role at Microsoft? Sure. Um, well, of course, uh, I'm Andrew. I'm a product manager on the Cosmos DB team. I've been with the product for about six years now, and it's been a really awesome time. It has been. So can you please tell us what are you going to talk about today? Uh, well, today I'm going to give you an overview of Cosmos DB, the capabilities, the unique features. Uh, I'm also going to go and show you what are the common use cases and scenarios that I keep seeing popping up, why Cosmos DB are in those solutions. Uh, I'll give you a quick summary of what are the top four things you should know about Cosmos DB before building any solution. Uh, and of course, I'm going to leave you with a bunch of go-to resources as well. So that, that way, I'm giving you some homework, Sanjay. That's awesome. OK, I'll do that. So let's get started. Where do you want to start? Uh, let's do a demo. Oh my I god, you're the, surprising me, though. The this is awesome. The best place to start it always <laughs> is, rather than PowerPoint, let's show you the product itself. OK, cool. So I'm going to go here. And I'm jumping into the Azure portal, okay. which is where, of course, everything Azure is. Yes. Uh, and what I've done here is I've provisioned several different resources. I have a Cosmos DB account, as well as I have a pair of virtual machines. Now, each of these different virtual machines is deployed in a different region. I have one running in West Europe, as well as I have another virtual machine running in West US 2. And what I'm going to do with these virtual machines is simulate this is where my application is going to live. Yes. Now, I also have a Cosmos DB account. And one of the neat things about Cosmos DB is, well, in a nutshell, it's a NoSQL database. It's a distributed database. How it's different from a uh, relational database is that it's built to scale out natively as opposed to scale up, right? And, and as we know, like relational databases, you can, uh, generally speaking, when your data volume grows, right, uh, or your request volume grows, you scale up by adding more cores. You end up of course. more more disks. Yes. But then you hit that ceiling, and that ceiling is, uh oh, what happens if I have the biggest machine available? Well, the solution is quite simple. You scale out to more machines. Yes. And there's many different dimensions of scale out. Scale out is actually a pretty nuanced concept. There's partitioning, which is dividing the data set. There's also a replication, which is copying the data set. Yes. And uh, what you want to do is not just be able to have these capabilities, but do that in a very, very robust manner. So as you replicate, traditionally, there's been a lot of challenges, which is how to deal with consistency, how do you deal with trade-offs with consistency, with latency. And latency uh, especially. And um, uh, relational databases used to push you into these hard extremes of strong and eventual consistency, uh, which would be modeled as synchronous or asynchronous replication. Like, maybe we can get some nice shades of gray in between. And on the partitioning side, a lot of the uh, uh, manageability aspects, like just doing like, things like schema updates, index updates, can we make that really, really a robust experience? So that's what I'm going to show you today. Okay. Uh, is a highly partitioned, highly replicated database, and it's going to be very easy to develop. So here, I've opened up my Cosmos DB account. Uh, and one of the first things I wanted to show you is on the replication perspective, we've made this globally distributed. We've deployed this across four different regions uh, around the world. In fact, uh, now that I have North America, Europe, Asia, and Australia covered, if I wanted to, let's say, have a gl truly global presence, I want to be in every continent. I want to be in uh, Africa, Africa and Brazil, too. Yeah. Replication, setting that up is literally clicks of buttons and hitting save. Wow. Uh, super it's my, easy. By the way, it's my favorite screen. I love this, how you, easy you guys do all this. <laughs> we want to make this as easy as possible. Yeah. And yeah. one of the beautiful things is once you've replicated everything, you can go into the consistency settings. And this is where I am showing you like we have these nice shades of gray. Now, what I'm going to do here is uh, I have a container set up, and I have a few applications on those VMs I mentioned. So here I have a, uh, I, I'm just having a fictitious scenario where uh, it's actually one of our common use cases is uh, IoT device telemetry. And what you'll notice here is I've initially, I'm going to start up with a, a fairly small container. I'm going to start with 1,000 RUs. Yeah. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you just how elastic this is. And traditionally, in a, uh, in, let's say, an old school RDBMS system, like this rebalancing and redistributing your cluster, yeah. you would have availability loss. Well, in this case, what we're doing is we're able to scale up, scale down dynamically, okay. and we'll all do that online. So if you have mission-critical workloads that always have to stay online, yeah. this actually gives you a really easy way to do so. So no need to configure. It just automatically does it? Uh, oh, and that's actually one of the really cool things is one of the new features we have is autopilot. You don't even have to know about these RUs. Wow. We'll talk a little bit about that okay. later. Um, so let's go over into our, our first uh, application. Uh, I'm jumping into my virtual machine. I have remote desktop into it. Yeah. 
And in my first application, what I'm going to do is, um, what it does is, there's a bunch of code here, but uh, the, the main meat of it is going to be right here. I'm going to spin up a ton of asynchronous tasks. Uh, and within those uh, tasks, I'm going to invoke this function insert document. And what insert document does is it actually just writes to the database in a really, really tight loop. And so think of it as on my app, I'm going to spin up a bunch of, bunch of threads. Each of those threads is pounding the database constantly with requests. Okay. And what I wanted to show you is just how elastic so you're things are. You're basically simulating a real world scenario. In yes, the demo. I'm trying to show you like if you had let's say an application that's running at scale. Yes. In this case, let's say an IoT device telemetry scenario. Are you talking about elevators or something? Uh, yeah, let's let's think of it as elevators. You want to do smart elevators, and one of the things that you want to do is a experience where if you know uh, elevator is unhealthy, you want to be able to get a technician right there on the spot so that that way elevator never stops. Right. Yes. This is a mission critical workload for you. So what I'm going to do here is the, the thing with IoT is devices tend to emit telemetry really, really fast, right? They're going, here's my state, here's my state, here's my state, here's my state. And within, let's say, 10 seconds, it's generated 10 data points. That's more than I'm going to tweet or anything like that uh, per day. People like to think social media is big data. No, IoT is actually truly I big see data. And what we're going to do here is if, imagine that I'm starting off you know, small. I've built my minimal viable product. I'm going to go and have, let's say, a set of devices running to the database. I've deployed it. I have a bunch of writes per second. And that's what I'm simulating here is lots of writes per second. Now, now that my MVP is successful, I want to go and you know go big, right? So uh, what I'm going to do is I notice like, hey, with a thousand RUs, you know what? That's that's cool and all, but can I, for example, scale 10x higher? And when I scale, like, does that happen instantaneously? Does that happen? You know, uh, traditionally you would like wait for like your shards to rebalance and reconfigure, and it, it takes a while. Yeah. But with Cosmos DB, I just go and add an additional zero, 10x. Uh, this isn't like 10% more throughput. This is 10x more throughput. Go back to my application, mm -hmm. run it again. And check it out. Right away, this thing is going to spin up. Uh, it takes a little bit to warm up, but as you notice, it's going to settle. Instead of at 1,000 RUs, roughly, it's going to settle at about 10,000 RUs consistently. Wow. Uh, the key thing here is there's no loss in availability, and it can happen instantaneously. Fantastic. That is, uh, I think, uh, key thing number one. Uh, the second thing, this is really all about uh, spreading our workload in a partitioned uh, uh, cluster. Let's also look at what we can do with replication. So replication typically you do with two reasons. Number one is high availability. You want redundancy so that if you know data center gets whacked by a, a hurricane or a natural disaster, you can fail over. Yeah. The other thing is you can do something really novel here, which is bring uh, CDN-like capabilities, like really, really low latency, yes. to every one of your users, no matter where they are around the globe. I see. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to run my second application, and I'm going to show you the latency. Uh, so in this application, what I do is I first connect to the database. Uh, you can steal my keys if you want to play with it. <laughs> uh, once I connect to the database, I just have a, this, this is a much simpler app. Uh, I just have a, a while loop, and I'm just going to run a query on it. And when I run the query against the database, I'm also going to start a stopwatch just to take a look at, well, how fast does this actually run, right? Um, well. Uh, you'll see the first request takes a second to initialize the client, but from here you get consistent, really, really low latency, tight latency, right? Like you can get even single digit millisecond latencies. So if you're building like really, really robust real time uh, applications, real time machine learning for personalization or fraud detection, this is incredibly fast. Absolutely. Now, the challenge here is I'm in my West US VM. Imagine if I had a West US database. It's talking to a local database, it's pretty fast. So you have a user in the West US as well as the? And now I'm going to set a second user. Uh, right, it's users in uh, West US, it talks to an application in West US, yeah. talking to a database in West US. OK, that's all ideal to uh, <laughs> But then, now, real world. Uh, that's Alice. Bob comes in. <laughs> yeah. Bob is in Europe. And okay. Bob, if I have to ship a packet from, let's say, um, Europe to West US, yes. I'm sending packets across the ocean. Yes. Take a look at what happens here. Same application, I'm going to run uh, queries, I'm going to do a stopwatch. And if I had a single region deployment, what you'll notice is, well, if I just even were to like ping a server across the ocean, it takes a while, right? Yes, like does. what you've noticed is the latency jumped from about 10 milliseconds to about 300 milliseconds. Yes. How do I fix that? 
globally distributed database, replicate, bring that data close to where the user is. I've actually intentionally connected my uh, West Europe VM to a US endpoint. Yes. And with the client, you can actually set custom failover policies. So that way, if like one region goes down, yes. Yes. it knows to automatically and seamlessly fail over to additional region. Mm -hmm. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually configure it properly so that my uh, West Europe application also talks to a West Europe replica. Yes. Rerun this again, and boom. All of a sudden, my latency has been floored by orders of magnitude. Fantastic. So here's a kicker. Historically, if I'm running many, many shards, and I'm also running many, many replicas, I have a project, right? I'm developing an application. The business is really pushing me to deliver function, you know, new functional requirements. I need to do a schema update. Yeah. If I have to do alter tables, create index across a dozen shards, across three or four, you know, uh, uh, several replicas, and then the business also tells me, by the way, no loss in availability. You cannot take your website off for maintenance. There's no offline. You have to do this online. Ooh. I've well, written those update statements before. Yeah, <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> what updates. you're doing here yes. is um, the application has changed its data model. Yes. It expects a different data model uh, from the database. And now you have to get, make sure that they have a consistent view across all these shards and replicas. Doing alter tables, create index is just a, an operational nightmare. It really slows down your application development. So Cosmos DB, not only does it act as a distributed database, it does this as a core tenant of the system. And one of the things that we want to make is it's easy to develop. So here I have um, uh, the data set I've been jamming into the database. It's, uh, it's a mock data set you know, for a, an IoT scenario. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you, like, let's say tomorrow I want to add an additional property to the, uh, the, the schema, right? Okay. Like, I want to add some tagging. And on the tagging, I can go and, uh, let's say, add a new tag that this is uh, uh, tag blue. And what I'm doing here is I want to you know, just add a new property or column without having to do any kind of uh, alter tables create index. I just wrote the record. Wow. No schema update, uh -huh. and I'm going to go and query for that record back. And using the automatic indexing, let's see, this is an array. Mm -hmm. Array contains c.tag blue. Automatic indexing, that came back blazing fast. I didn't have to do wow. any kind of crazy deployment. That's magical, actually. <laughs> I'm going to leave you with a few things now yes. that you've seen the magic of Cosmos DB. Uh -huh. uh, one is, how are people using it? Yes. If I were to go and codify this, and you can always you know, pause the video here. Uh, uh, I'm not going to read all yeah, of this of for you. Yes. But typically, people use uh, us for, you saw the latency for real-time workloads, yes. real-time telemetry. Uh -huh. Real-time telemetry has another uh, aspect, is the write and ingest. Uh, and one of the hard challenges historically with databases is many of them were read optimized. They would have locking mechanisms to do concurrency control. And they would do it in a, in a pessimistic way. But chances are, like for like telemetry, you're actually doing like most of these writes aren't conflicting. You can do it in an optimist, uh, optimistic concurrency control and using a, a log structured uh, underlying store to get very very high write throughput as well as partitioning that out. And so we see this a lot in doing if it's IoT, it's device telemetry. If it's user uh, uh, or uh, user facing websites, user telemetry uh, mm -hmm. to do things, which is the second workload, real time personalization. This is once again uh, really using the the latency. Like if you need to generate, uh, if you have a website that needs to uh, respond just like that, right? You have a, a large scale e-commerce website. You're going to go and personalize the landing page so that Alice sees products that Alice likes, yes. Bob sees products Obviously. that Bob likes. That way, you actually can increase your sales conversions a little bit on your e-commerce website. Uh, but the thing is, users not going to wait two seconds for a page to load, right? They're going to go, oh, okay, uh, this thing, screw it, let's hit back button. Well, this thing is going to respond a single digit millisecond, giving you ample buffer to implement that business logic. Uh, people also use us for uh, the mission critical workloads. Okay. The resiliency you get across regions, this is a multi-master database. You don't even have to do server-side failovers anymore. Mm -hmm. The client, I showed you earlier, you can configure different regions. The client seamlessly just goes, oh, OK, I can't talk to this endpoint. Let me go and just gracefully fall back. Yes. And then, of course, uh, we see a lot of people take advantage of the, of the fact that this is a fully managed service, and they migrate their NoSQL databases, uh, existing ones, over here. Fantastic. Four, top four things you need to know. 
partitioning, request units, time to live, change feed. I'm not going to go into these in yes, depth because we're going to do follow-up videos yes. or you've already seen some of the partitioning yes. and data modeling. Uh, what we'll do is uh, you can check out, uh, here's a, a quick summary of what you need to know. But if you're going to know anything in Cosmos DB, these are the things that you should know about. Fantastic. And then I'm going to give you some homework. Yes. Uh, if you want to know more about Cosmos DB, this was a really you know, a crash course uh, on what is the product. Uh, we have a full day Pluralsight course that I encourage any of our users to uh, take a look. That's It'll awesome. go you from, hey, I don't know anything about yeah. this, to a hero and, uh, in a single day. We have a bunch of different uh, um, labs and decks and other uh, workshop materials, uh, yes. both uh, for Cosmos DB specifically, as well as full-blown solutions that we've pre-built out uh, at these GitHub links. Um, of course, uh, we really value our user feedback. This is where uh, you can send in our feedback and also encourage people to you know, follow us on Twitter. That's where you'll see the latest updates. It's a cloud service. Things are always moving very fast. Fantastic. Yeah. So awesome to talk to you every time. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching this short Azure Readiness video.